Hello Third Gurus, welcome back and in this episode we are going to look at how to perform custom validations using our Validate plugin. So before we get into the details on how to perform custom validation, let's try to answer uh, one important question. Why do we need custom validations in first place? Now in order to answer that question, let's go to our identity provider which is Cognito in our case over here. So under this Cognito, if you see the password uh, strength or the password policy which we have set. So we said that we need a minimum of eight length of characters and we need that password to have a number, a special character, a lowercase and uppercase. So here we have certain special business requirements for a password. Now, if you go back to our Vulidate documentation, so on the Vulidate website, so if you go ahead under that section, we have something called as uh, Vulidate's uh, built-in validator section. So if you go ahead and see, we have required and we have min and uh, max lengths over here. But if you see, we don't have anything uh, built-in validation which performs uh, some uh, specific to our business requirements like uh, password needs to have a number or a special character or uh, it needs to have a small or capital letter. So here the reason why we need uh, custom validators with our, Vulidate, with our Vulidate is in order to meet certain business requirements. All right then, so now that we have answered why do we need custom validators with our Vulidate, let's go ahead and see how do we implement that. Now, in order to do that, go to our SRC folder, right click on it and create a folder, subfolder over here. So let's name that folder as validators. So now under this section, we will just go ahead and create a new JS file. So let's, in our case, let's name it as password.js file. So now this JS file is going to contain certain methods which help us perform the custom validations. So in our case over here, we found that uh, we don't have anything, something specially required for numbers. So let's go ahead and first define our first method which performs whether a password contains a number or not. So how do we do that? So let's go ahead and first write export. So here we are just defining a vanilla JavaScript function, nothing related to our view. So here I just say it as like has number. So your view date will go ahead and pass you the value. So how do we find whether this value contains a number or not? So we will go ahead and use JavaScript regular expressions. So here in order to do that, I'll just say, so backslash D and we will be using certain method called as test. So, and I'll be testing the value. So here, if this value contains a digit, then I will return true. Otherwise, I'll return false to our value date. So that's it. So in order to create or in order to find whether our password has a number or not, all I have done is I've used a digit, digit uh, regular expression. So it, it all it does is it will try to find whether there is a number in that provided value or not. If it is there, it will return us true. If it is not there, then it returns us false. Now let's go back to our Cognito and see what are the other conditions. We need a special character. We need a user case, uh, sorry, we need a special character. We need uh, uppercase or lowercase letter. Let's go ahead and try to create a function which tries to identify whether our value contains a capital letter or a small letter. So in order to do that, first let's go ahead and do a lowercase letter one. So here again, I just do the similar thing. I'll just say it as export. Now I'll just go ahead and say it as like has lower case letter. And again, validate passes some value to us. We will just go ahead and do the same thing over here. So here I'll just say it as like written. Now again, we will just go ahead and use the similar regular expressions over here. So how do we do that? 
So here I'll just say it as like a to z. So this is the regular expression for whether we have a, a lowercase letter or not in the provided value. So here I'll just say test and I'll just say value. And again, I'll put a question mark. And if it contains return true, otherwise return false. Now here I have just a type of mistake. It should be function. So I had an extra A over there. Now similarly, let's go ahead and copy this method and create as capital letter. So here I've just named the method as, as capital case letter. So now over here, all I need to do is I just need to say A to capital Z, small capital A to capital Z. Now we have one more condition inside our Cognitor. It needs a special character. So what are the special characters which are used by your AWS Cognitor? So if you go back over here, we have this section over here. These are the characters. These are the special characters which your Cognitor accepts or like a special character. If you provide equal to or addition symbol, it doesn't consider them as special characters. So we need an expression which verifies this collection of special characters inside our password. So how do we do that again? We just create one more function and I'll just say it as like has special character. So here I'll just say it as like has special character. Now here, what I'm going to do is we are just going to, I'm just going to pause over here and create a regular expression, which is suitable for uh, which contains the special character set, which I have just shown you on the AWS Cognito documentation page. All right. So here, this is the regular expression, which contains all the set of values which are displayed in our AWS Cognito documentation. So what this guy does is it takes a value and checks whether any of this special character is available in the provided value. If it is there, it returns true. If it is not there, it just returns false. So these are the four additional validations which are required on our password when we are trying to perform some validation on the user input. So now what is the next step? Now that we have defined our custom validation code, how do we configure this functions with our Vulidate? It's pretty easy. Let's go to our signup page. So here that's the page where we were trying to perform our password validations. So here in our previous video tutorial, we have added these validations. So just in case if you have missed that video tutorial, I'll provide that link in the description section below. So please go through that video tutorial first before going, before going further on this video tutorial. So now over here, how do I configure them? First, you need to import those functions into your view. So here are all I just need to say it as like import. So we will just come back to that section over here, what we need to import. So here I'll just say it as like dot dot, Again, slash dot dot slash. Here we have something called as validators slash password. So now from that, let's go ahead and just import has number. So now how do we go ahead and configure that has number? All you have to do is on the password section fee, just say has number. Now what your validate does is at the runtime, when the, whenever the user is entering a value, it will just go ahead and call one by one all of these methods. Now, similarly, we have four, totally four conditions. So here I'll just say it as like, has lowercase letter, has capital case letter, and has special case. So let's go ahead and copy paste all these methods over here. So let me go ahead and format this code. So here, we have letter now here let's go ahead and uh, ask as capital letter so all i've done is uh, under the format section just if it is more than certain length of character your vs code tries to align them in this vertical order which is a bit more uh, easy to read 
So here I've just copied the last condition which we have as special character. So that's it. All you have done is you have created certain JavaScript functions which does your business validation and this is how you are asking your view date to call them. Now how do we find whether that particular error has occurred or not? So it's pretty simple. If you have seen in our previous case, uh, especially like your min length, we were using whatever the min length field which we have said, we were trying to use the same thing. So now for our has number and has capital letter and has small letter, we will just go ahead and use the same thing. So I'll just go ahead and copy the previous lines which we created in our previous video tutorial. So I'll just format it. So now how do I find whether the has number has uh, is true or not? So all you have to say is this dot dollar v dot password dot has number. So if it has that number, then this won't be true. If it doesn't have that, so what we need to do? So here we just need to say password must contain a number. Now similarly, I'll just go ahead and quickly create the conditions for the remaining three conditions, business requirements, which we have. So the first condition is has lower case letters. So again, I'll just say password must contain a lower case letter. Now similarly, we have one more condition which states it needs to have has capital letter. So here I'll just say it as password must contain a capital case letter. And finally, we have our fifth condition over here that is has special character. So here I'll just say password must contain a special character. That's it. So all we have done is we have created our JavaScript functions over here. And this is how we try to ask our view date to execute those functions whenever the user is trying to enter the value on the password field. And we are trying to customize. So here we are showing the custom error messages whenever that, whenever that particular error message has happened. So now over here, I'm already running this application over here. So now what I'll do is uh, I'll just go to our browser and let's go ahead and try to access it. So here I'll just refresh it. So now under the password section, you can see over here, it says password is required. Now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and try to enter it. So here it says it should be minimum of eight characters. So here I'll just say it as like eight characters. So for purposefully what I'll do is uh, I'll just go ahead and enter plus symbols eight times. So now it says it needs a number. So that means our validation is working perfectly correct. And now again, it says it needs a lowercase letter. So here I'll enter a lowercase letter. And again, it says it needs a capital letter. So again, I enter a capital letter over here. So finally, it says it needs a special character. So I'll just enter that special character over here. So what is a special character which we have? Anything from over here. So I'll just go back to a browser and I'll just say dollar. So that means it has performed all the validations which our business requirement has. That's it. So with this, we have successfully configured a custom validator to our password field. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. And as always, if you have liked this video tutorial, please do not forget to like, comment and share this video tutorial with your friends. And if you have any suggestions or feedback related to our web series, Again, please do not forget to provide that thing in our comment section. We have even provided our Facebook uh, page URL over here under the description section. Please do not forget to even like that page if you are, uh, if you are available on the Facebook. And you guys can, uh, if you don't want your feedback to be visible to the public, you can send us a private message on our Facebook and we will try to reply you back ASAP. As always, you guys can always subscribe to our channel by clicking a channel icon below over here and you can view our entire playlist related to this web series over here. Thank you.